Alrighty, welcome, welcome, welcome. It's your brand buddy, Patrick Sesco here. How are you guys doing? Just checking to see we had some technical difficulties on the actual first stream. So I wanna make sure that this is all coming through. Huh, let me make sure it doesn't look like my sound. Test one, yep, that's coming through. Yes, it's working. All right. Welcome, welcome to another episode of Brand Marks the Spot. I'm your brand buddy, and this show is all about uh, design, uh, branding, and life as a solo business owner in the online world to help you leverage the power of branding to grow your business, your audience, and to make more sales uh, via branding. So, and in today's episode, we're going to talk about the Seinfeld method of discovering your ideal customer. And uh, we're going to talk about what an ideal customer is, why you need one in your business, and how to implement it into your business. It's going to be a pretty quick episode, so hopefully uh, you'll get some actionable content here. And uh, let's just get started. And before we do get started, um, this episode is brought to you by my course creators, uh, Amy uh, Porterfield. She's one of my mentors and she's taught me how to create online courses. And she has this ultimate course creation starter kit, which is pretty amazing in and of itself for a free download. But if you have ever dreamed about incorporating an online course into your business, I highly recommend you check out this course creation starter kit. Um, this is going to be sort of a, an intro to like how to name your course, what type of course to create for your business, uh, what kind of course topic you're going to have, how much to charge for it, all of those things. And it's a pretty hefty uh, uh, download. So I highly suggest you grab this and um, yeah, grab it at uh, patricksesco.com forward slash starter kit and go check that out. And uh, I'll be sharing also a masterclass that she'll be um, having uh, today and tomorrow. So check, uh, be on the lookout for that. So let's get on with the show. So in today's episode, and I'm going to put myself on camera here as well. So let me see. There we go. All right. So in today's episode, again, we're going to talk about what an ideal customer profile is, why you need one in your business, um, what the components are of the ideal customer profile and how to effectively use it uh, to attract and connect with your audience. So let's get this ball rolling here. And just to let you know, here in uh, Maryland, I'm north of Baltimore. It's really kind of rainy and gloomy out. So I decided to put on my my beachy Hawaiian shirt on in hopes that will sort of cheer everything up a little bit. So uh, <clears throat> if you're wondering what this is, it's my Hawaiian shirt to give me some happiness today. So. Anyways, what is an ideal customer profile? An ideal customer profile is an internal document that you use in your business. And you create this by doing a couple of exercises that gives you a snapshot of who your ideal customer is, what their demographics are, what their psychological profile is. And I'm not talking about like CSI psychological profile. We'll get into the details on that, but it basically becomes a guide for you in your business so that way you can niche down to a specific segment of people in an audience to create content and products and services for that are going to actually resonate with them and uh, stuff that they're actually going to be looking for and basically them getting thinking that you are reading their mind when you're putting your content out there right so uh and what you see here on the screen here is just those covers of uh an ideal customer profile worksheet I have that's part of my branding course that's going to be coming up in the next couple of months. So be on the lookout for that this fall. Um, and uh, I'll be sharing that with you when that comes out. But uh, this is the ideal customer profile, which is one of the foundational steps you need to take uh, when you're, you know, create whether you're starting a business or whether you're growing a business, um, because you really need to understand who it is that you're talking to in order to be effective in selling your products and services and also, you know, helping and impacting that group of people that you are, you know, there to serve. So um, why do you need the ideal customer profile? So, well, as I just said, those things there, but it's really to truly understand how you can help your audience, right? 
it's going to allow you to connect deeper with your audience because you'll have a better understanding of what their journey is. Um, it's going to appeal to their struggles. You know, what are they struggling with as it relates to your product and service, right? Uh, you'll be able to make content uh, that will resonate with them because, you know, if you don't know what it is that they're having problems with, how are you going to create content that's going to resonate with them, right? Um, you're going to be able to create offers and solutions that they are specifically looking for. And you'll be able to talk to them in a way that's using their language so that the way that they can really uh, connect with you and make uh, they'll think that you're reading their mind, like I said. And uh, you'll be able to niche down to a specific segment of people who are looking for what you have to offer. So for an, as an example, have you ever been scrolling through Facebook or Instagram or whatever, and you see a, an ad, it's a beautiful ad image. Uh, and just as a side note, so remember in the last episode, we talked about, you know, your, your brain only has a fraction of a second to make a decision whether or not you are going to uh, read something based on the design. So that design is the first barrier of entry. So remember, if you have a good like ad image, that's going to grab somebody's attention. So maybe you've been on Facebook in the past where you uh, come across an ad, you see it, it catches your eye, you stop, stop the scroll and you start to read it. And whatever that offer is from the, the person that you're reading it from, you're like, you're reading it and you're like, oh my God, yes, this is exactly me. It's like they're reading my mind. Well, if that happens, that's because you, they had you in mind as their ideal customer when they created that content. So they were able to appeal to the struggles that you're having because it's not just you that are having those struggles. There's a swath of people in your audience that has those same struggles. So they were able to hone in on that and be able to appeal to that. So that way they can really resonate with you and provide a product or service that will truly help you and have impact. So keep that in mind when you are doing that. So up next, so how do you create an ideal customer profile? So this is where I'm really going to butcher this, but you know what? I'm just having fun. So here it goes. This is where I use my Jerry Seinfeld method of discovering your ideal customer. And that is who are these people? Okay. So that was really bad, right? <laughs> I need to be wearing a puffy shirt for that one, I guess today. <laughs> so really that's what it is. So it's basically asking who your ideal customers are, right? What are their, strengths? What are their weaknesses? What are they struggling with? Um, what are their demographics? And we're going to get into the components here right now. So the components of your ideal customer profile are three things, your demographics, your psychographics, and a narrative, right? So the first up is your demographics. Now your demographics, the dictionary says it's the statistical data relating to the population of particular groups of people within that population. So that's just a fancy way of saying these are the things like that are sort of hard. These don't change per se. Well, the age changes, but um, it's their age, their gender, their marital status. What are their values and hobbies and their lifestyle, um, occupation, their income, their goals, who they follow as it relates to your product or service or offering. Uh, so these are the things that are important to understand because, you know, an age, age could be a determining factor who, as to who your audience is. So you might be helping uh, people who are newly retired uh, live, a, uh, live off of their retirement as uh, efficiently and uh, as possible, for instance. I'm just making this up off, off the cuff. But so then obviously age is going to play into that, right? So it's going to be, you know, 65 and above. Um, or maybe you help, um, maybe you're a, um, a doula and you help uh, uh, women who are expecting. So obviously gender, women, um, and obviously age is going to be childbearing ages, which is going to be a range. Or maybe you're a, you know, a relationship coach. So maybe their marital status might be uh, in play there. So these are all the things that you have to kind of take into consideration when you're creating this and think about how it relates back to your offer. Now, some people would say, <clears throat> excuse me, some people would say like uh, eye color, hair color and all that, that a lot of people have put those into their uh, ideal customer profiles. 
and they're not like really important to the details of what your as it relates to your service. Uh, but it's it's a good idea to do that because when you are creating this, it's really good to focus as if it were one actual person, because then when you're creating your content and using the ideal customer profile to create your contact content and your products and services, you sort of have this image of a person in your mind's eye. So when you're creating your content, you can be a little bit more conversational as if you were talking to that one person sitting down having coffee and those kinds of things. Right. So obviously their occupation is going to come into play. Uh, if you're a career coach, maybe their occupation is going to come into play. What's their income level? Are they going to be able to afford your services? If you're a high touch, uh, high end, uh, high cost service or mastermind or, you know, what are their goals, who they follow online. So these are all the things that are going to come into play again, as it relates to your product and service, right? So those are demographics in a nutshell, you know, uh, get a sheet of paper out and just write those things down. There's no right or wrong way or pop it into a Google doc and you'll see, uh, you'll get that information there. So next up is going to be your psychographics, right? Psychographics dictionary definition again is the study and classification of people according to their attitudes, aspirations, and other psychological criteria, especially in market research. So this is essentially what we're doing here is market research, right? So psychographics are essentially going to be the emotional side of what your ideal customer is going through again, as it relates to your product or service. What are their pain points? What are they struggling with? Uh, what are their aspirations as it relates to your product or service? So, uh, you know, I help business owners build uh, killer brands to help them grow their business. So mine is related to business owners. But if um, if I'm a weight loss coach, for instance, uh, a pain point and uh, things that somebody might struggle with is going to be obviously a losing weight. But it could be, you know, things like self-esteem or depression or their aspirations might be, oh, I want to get off of my med uh, my diabetes medication um, or, uh, you know, I can't even make it up the stairs without, you know, feeling like I just ran a marathon. Um, and uh, again, the aspirations could be of if, relating it back to the weight loss coach. So you could have somebody who just wants to lose that last 10 pounds. So your the psychographics, you know, the psychological profile of that person is going to be a lot different than somebody who who is maybe say you know obese and they need to le uh, lose a hundred pounds, their struggles are going to be different, right? The struggles of the person wanting to lose the last ten pounds is maybe concerned with you know getting their body in bikini uh, ready shape for the beach, uh, or you know getting your six pack to show, losing that last ten pounds, as opposed to your person who's obese who's not necessarily worried about those things. They're just worried about their overall health, their mental health their self-esteem, obviously their physical health, getting off medication, those kinds of things. So those psychographics, those mindset things that your audience might be going through are uh, some of the things you want to focus on depending on what your product or service is. Okay, next up, um, if you're here, say hi live in the comments or if you're watching a replay, type in a hashtag replay. I'm doing a, I'm using my standing desk today. so. Uh, this is a new little thing. So I, I like to move around. So if I'm moving back and forth, hopefully that doesn't bug. <laughs> um, all right. So let's get on to the next section of the ideal customer profile. And that's the narrative, right? Let me actually back up. Um, uh, talking about demographics and psychographics, some people would say, well, how do I find this information out? Um, well, a lot of it, you can just kind of use some common sense and like, oh, what do you think? You know, you can sort of use some deductive reasoning and guess. Uh, but better is if you already already have like one on one clients that you've helped with in the past, you can actually interview them Just say, hey, you know, I want to I want to ask you a little bit of uh, I want to ask you a few questions. Why did you work with me? What were your problems that you were having? Uh, what problems did my coaching product or service solve for you and how are you how do you how did you feel before how did you feel after so those are all the things you want to ask your actual ideal customer if you have one if not it's okay you can kind of just give it a guesstimate right and uh, this is a living breathing document too so this will change over time and who knows if your business changes 
you know, if you change your offerings, then your, your ideal profile, uh, ideal customer profile is going to change as well. All right. The next up is the narrative part of the ideal customer profile. So this is kind of like a role play game you're going to play. You're going to sort of become your ideal customer, right? And you're going to write out, uh, it's, it's essay time, right? School starting. So you're going to have to write a little mini essay or just sort of a narrative as if you were your ideal customer, right? And you are going to basically tailor that narrative to what you offer as it relates to your pain points, you being in the mind of your uh, ideal customer. So you wouldn't want to talk about pain points of running a business if your client was, if your client's problem was obesity, right? So um, in the narrative, you want to do a little role play. You want to say, oh, what is my life like before whatever transformation that your product or service gives? And then you want to uh, write a little paragraph about what life is like after the transformation. Um, again, you can interview a favorite client if you have one uh, and that will get you some real world uh, research. And if you don't have it, use your best guess. And the reason why uh, we do this is because you really want to get into the mind of your ideal customer. And if you can actually interview one or more than one of your ideal customers, uh, you can actually start to use their language because that's usually the best thing to do. You want to use their language because sometimes their language might be a lot different than what you might think. Like for me, you know, branding was a sort of catch all term for a lot of people. And really, they just wanted like graphic design or brand design because branding can mean so many things to so many people. So in doing my uh, ideal customer research, I found that while a lot of the people related to the term branding, I had to add design, brand design or visual brand to the um, uh, to, to my language to match that of what my ideal customer was looking for. So uh, keep that in mind. So um, how do you implement all of this? Once you do that narrative, once you have your psychographics, once you have your demographics, then we're going to go ahead and implement this into a strategy of some sort. But what you want to do is you want to take that that narrative that you did and sort of use that sort of language, the pain points, the struggles that they're having, and you can use that in your content. So whether you're writing blog posts or social media posts or doing a podcast or a video show like this or a blog, uh, the things that you actually email to your clients or to your audience, should I say, the products and services you create, you know, if you're doing a lead magnet, if you want to watch last week's episode, we talked about lead magnets and how to use those in your business to grow your audience of ideal customers. Um, what is your lead magnet going to be about? What kind of uh, struggle is it going to solve? What is it going to do to give your audience a quick win? And in doing this ideal customer research, if you will, you're going to get that background information that's going to help you create messaging and content that's going to uh, resonate with your ideal audience. So again, use the words and the struggles directly from your audience. And then if you want to create a mind's eye picture of somebody specific to help you write, it makes it a little bit easier. It's a nice little exercise. And as, as you get more practice, it'll be a lot less, um, a lot less difficult as you go on and you won't necessarily have to do that, but that helps some people. So if you, if you use an actual person, uh, even if it's a fictitious person, some people even grab a photograph from, uh, you know, iStock or Unsplash and just, you know, create a person that would uh, sort of have a, a basic look of what an ideal customer would look like. Right. Um, and one word about things like eye color and things like that. I think I mentioned it before, but it, those aren't super important unless you were like a hair, you know, a hair specialist who specialized in you know, gingers, you know, people with naturally red hair, then obviously hair color is going to play a part. Um, so think about all those things. So again, to recap, your ideal customer profile is sort of an internal document that's going to give you a snapshot of who your ideal customer is, what their demographics are, age, gender, marital status, family, income, goals, those kinds of things. Then their de uh, psychographics, which are going to be their pain points, what they're struggling with, what keeps them up at night, um, what, what kind of th personal, emotional things that they are experiencing as it relates to your product or service. 
and then the narrative that kind of helps spell those things out for each one. So that way you have this, I call it a sieve, if you will. It's just something that you can filter all of your content in. So if you write a content, a piece of content, or you do a show like this or a blog post, if you write it out and then you sort of run it through your ideal customer profile, you want to make sure that you're hitting those pain points. You want to make sure that it's directed towards the right demographic. Um, so it's a good tool to have. So that way you can really uh, make sure that your content resonates with your ideal customer. And that is it. So it's your turn. So I want you to go ahead and take those things, go up with Google Doc, just get started. Don't overthink it. Uh, if you've never done one before, give that a chance, give that a shot. I'm going to come back on camera here. Give that a shot if you've never done one before and you'll start to get a, uh, a better understanding of who your audience is and it's going to help content creation become a lot easier. So that's what I got for you guys today on this episode of Brand Marks the Spot. I hope you guys like my shirt today and hopefully the sun's going to be coming out. But again, you guys have a great week. Leave a comment below if you have any questions or comments or if you if there's a particular uh, topic you want me to cover on the show, let me know. Drop me a, a, a comment in the comment section. All right. You guys have a wonderful Tuesday. We'll talk to you soon. Later.